TV News. I'm Kayla Watson. And I'm Jacob Jansen. Coming up, Women on Wednesdays is bringing light to women on campus. And a look at how to get fit while raising funds for the Australian bushfires. Buck TV News starts now. Throughout his 81 years of life, Art Rosenbaum has expressed interest in many different areas of art. His passion and zeal is equally mirrored in his career. A man of many talents, Rosenbaum's tapestry of pursuits includes his accomplishments as a painter, muralist, illustrator, educator, author, and much more. The exhibit will be on display through February 21st, and on Thursday, February 20th at 5 p.m., Rosenbaum will be there in person to discuss his tapestry, followed by a reception that all are free to attend. Chinese New Year is just around the corner. To help kick off this celebration, the BCM will be hosting the Chinese Spring Festival. This event is free and includes entertainment such as interactive games, paper cutouts, and a variety of ethnic foods to expand your cultural palate. This event takes place on Sunday, February 9th from 4 to 9 p.m. at the BCM, located on 1012 Seminole Drive, right behind campus. For more information, please contact Tedra Bennett at mcstaff at etsu.edu. Of the over 800 faculty members at ETSU, 41% of them are women. To promote this, the ETSU's Women's Studies Department created the monthly Women on Wednesday series, which invites ETSU faculty and staff from all different majors and programs to talk about their research and work. Department Head Dr. Phyllis Thompson had this to say about the program. I think what we're trying to do is, is reach as many different types of um, of students as possible. Established in 2012 by Dr. Thompson, the Women on Wednesday series aims to rain, raise visibility about the work women do on campus and bring students and faculty together. It's that time of the week again. Grab your friends and head to Free Movie Friday. This week, Buck Tainment will be screening Joker, starring Joaquin Phoenix. The story of a mentally distraught clown for hire and his downward spiral after he commits multiple crimes and unveils the truth about his childhood. The film reveals how his alter ego, Joker, came to be. The film starts at 7 p.m. tonight in Ball Hall Auditorium. Remember that Free Movie Friday happens every Friday, so be sure to check in every week to see what's on. Everyone knows what regular tigers look like, but how about saber-toothed tigers? Paleo artist Mauricio Anton has been studying saber tooths for decades in search of information necessary to bring them as close to back to life as possible. Like what did they look like? Why did they become extinct? Could be answered from his research. On Wednesday, February 17th, from uh, Wednesday, February 12th, from 7 to 8 p.m. in Ball Hall Auditorium, Anton will be giving the first of four free public lectures and take questions afterwards. The bushfires that have engulfed Australia have devastated many. CrossFit Hatch of Johnson City is doing their part to lend a hand. They are accepting donations during their 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. class tonight in downtown Johnson City. All the donations will be going to the Australian bushfires through Ellen DeGeneres' charity. Don't worry, if you're out of shape like I am, the class will be for all fitness levels. So, if you want to challenge yourself while helping others, look no further. The CrossFit Hatch is located on 109 Cherry Street. For more information, visit their website at CrossFitHatch.com. Two cats and a herd of buffalo isn't exactly what you would expect in downtown Johnson City, but that's the name of Milligan College's new art exhibit at Dos Gatos Coffee Bar. The show's opening night is today, Friday, February 7th from 6 to 8 p.m. Two Cats and a Herd of Buffalo highlights the phenomenal work of Milligan's graphic design and fine art students and will be featuring 30 pieces of art selected by a student panel. This event is free and open to the public and the art will be on display till Monday, February 25th. Looking a little rough around the edges and not wanting to pay the steep haircut prices on a college budget? Well, TaylorMade Cuts and Fades is here to save the day. Going on four years, Micah Taylor has been giving back to the ETSU community by giving free haircuts annually. This event is free to students and staff. It will be held in the Multicultural Center on Monday, February 10th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. For more information, check out TaylorMade Barbershop on Instagram and Facebook. Coming up is your national news. 
Buck TV News will be right back. Oh, sweetie. Okay, you know what? Let's let's take off his sweatshirt. Get rid of pictures of him. We don't have to look at him. Goodbye, Dave. Mom, you don't understand. He's tagged in like 400 of my posts. I can cut out tags. No, that's that's not how it works. What is a tag? <laughs> You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care would love to share their first with you. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover their unique mix of all kinds of traits. Where'd Wiley go? Where's Wiley? Ah, oh, there's you. Pa? Do you remember being an ancient wolf? Do you ever feel the call of the wild? You're a renegade cop, and I'm a con woman with nothing to prove. But together, we could really solve this murder. They're a little bit of a lot of things. But all of them are pure love. What to expect when you're expecting a teenager. Today we're talking about how to wake up your teen. And this works literally every time. Good kisses. Good kisses. You heard how loud I know, I heard. I heard. It wasn't you. Yeah. It was the... Is that bacon? You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. First responders in a North Carolina town are doing all that they can to help one of their own. CNN's Test Bargeber has the story. He's lost everything and a piece of his family. It's hard for Chief Edward Lipscomb to talk about Tuesday morning's tragedy on Birch Bridge Road. On the way to the scene, fire crews learned Eddie Thomas's daughter was trapped inside this home that was burning. Firefighters got Candace Wynn out of the house. Then it was her dad's job to save her life. I said it, I'd be a wreck out there. Eddie never missed a beat. And that's the kind of guy he is. He did everything he could. Everybody on the scene did everything they could. The 40-year-old mother did not survive. We're family. And, you know, it, it's heartbreaking to see that. And as a parent, I can't even imagine what he's going through. Firefighters and EMTs are helping Eddie's family in their next battle, dealing with this loss. One way or another, we're going to raise the money that he needs to rebuild his house and replace his clothes. We can't replace his daughter, but we need to help him you know, do what's right for her. They've donated about $15,000 for those repairs and to cover funeral costs. You know, I've worked many shifts with Eddie and, you know, if my family needed him, that's one of the guys that I want. A show of support for a member of their family who lost so much. We gotta look out for each other. State officials are helping investigate the fire. A medical research lab in Arizona is developing a better test for the new strain of coronavirus. To do that, they're working to map its entire genome. CNN's Nicole Gregg has the story. Scientists inside TGen North taking us inside their Flagstaff lab. They're using supercomputers as their secret sauce to break the code of this new strain of coronavirus. It's a computer, it's a camera. The coronavirus is made up of letters, just like our DNA. It's about uh, 20,000 letters long. And they have to know these letters to find the blueprint of the virus so they can create a test. That genetic code um, tells us everything we need to know. It tells us all the secrets of that organism. It tells us, is it changing? It tells us what's going on? How is that virus able to 
get into human cells. Right now, only the CDC can test for the newest strain of coronavirus from China. So scientists here and across the country working to crack the code. And when they do, they'll have a test that doctors and hospitals can use everywhere. Here's something you may not know, SARS and MERS, those are types of coronaviruses and the labs here also worked to develop tests on those as well. But the big question is when will they have a test ready and approved? When it's an emergency like this, what they try to shorten that down is down to months and maybe even weeks in order to get the go through the approval process at the FDA. The CDC has the only test for the coronavirus as of right now. The FDA issued an emergency authorization Tuesday to let qualified labs administer it. And that's all for national news. Coming up is Cole Sams with sports. Buck TV News will be right back. It appears these hot ashes are about to be dumped, which could possibly start a wildfire. How will Smokey deal with such a hot situation? The garden hose defense. Next, a thorough stir. Then, another spray. And finally, feeling if the ashes are cool. Oh, yeah. Ah, yes, the selfie. A ritual practiced so frequently with this tribe, but not so much by Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. We cannot be bystanders. We can stop to make sure someone is okay. We can warn someone when their drink isn't safe. And disrupt the situation. We can. Get someone the cab. Or walk them home safely. We can make campuses safer for our friends. Our roommates. Our, our classmates, classmates. Our, our fellow, fellow human, human beings. beings. We cannot be bystanders. We can. Intervene. It's on us. All of us. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. It's our turn. Go to OurTurnToHelp.org and donate what you can. Hope is on the way. Welcome back to Buck TV News. I'm Cole Sams with your weekly sports update. The ETSU women's basketball team was looking to bounce back last night after dropping a three-overtime thriller against Chattanooga last Saturday. Facing Western Carolina, the Bucks would get, get it going early with a three from Gabby Brown on a nice pass from Kaya Upton. The Bucks would continue to pour it on in the first, with junior guard Micah Sheets following up her own miss with a putback to extend the Bucks' lead into the second period. To make matters worse for the Catamounts, sophomore guard Elise Stafford had a career night here pouring in three of her 29 points shooting 11 to 17 from the field. The Bucks would pull away in the fourth and defeat Western Carolina 76 to 49. They are back in action in Brooks Gym tomorrow against UNCG at 2 p.m. It continues to be an historic season for the ETSU men's basketball team as the Bucks defeated in-state rival Chattanooga 80 to 64 inside McKenzie Arena on Wednesday night. Senior guard Trey Board III scored a team-high 18 points, going six of nine from the field with five big threes in the second half. Sophomore guard Davian Williamson and senior center Lucas Nassan also recorded their first double-doubles each for their collegiate careers, with Williamson scoring 14 points and adding 10 assists, and Nassan tallying 12 points and a career-high 12 rebounds. ETSU approved at 24 overall in the season and traveled to Macon, Georgia in a battle with Mercer tomorrow 
at 430. Luckily, the ETSU women's tennis team won't have to travel very far for the first home matches of the 2020 season. Due to inclement weather this past week, the team will play this weekend at the Bristol Racquet Club in Bristol, Tennessee. The team's first matches are currently underway with Georgia State this morning and will continue into the weekend in a matchup with VCU on Sunday starting at 9 a.m. The ETSU football team signed 23 players during this past Wednesday's National Signing Day period. Head coach Randy Sanders gave some observations with the class in a press conference given on Wednesday. A lot of times you don't truly know what you have till you look back two or three years down the road, but um, we feel like we really addressed a lot of needs with this class. We, we've lost a lot of big guys. Well, with 10 out of the 23 recruits being on the offensive or defensive line, I'd say Coach Sanders will be just fine. We are just around the corner for the 2020 ETSU men baseball season, and excitement is building around some of the team's key players. In the Southern Conference's rankings released on Thursday afternoon, senior catcher Jackson Greer was named a preseason All-SoCon first team selection. Greer had a tremendous junior campaign with a 314 batting average, including 65 hits, 10 home runs, and 42 RBIs. Two right-handers, seniors Landon Knack and Nathaniel Tate, were also selected to the second team as well. The team is looking forward to the start of the season, with their first game of the year next Friday against Toledo at Thomas Stadium at 4 p.m. Coming up, here's your play of the day. Duke's Jack White with a tremendous assist to Cassius Stanley with a ferocious dunk and Duke's 63-55 win over Boston College. Buck TV News will be back after this. And Jack White with the steal as Heath got himself in trouble. Now White to Cassius Stanley. And Jim Christian, yeah, not going to let that momentum train get started. Yeah, yeah. Look, Boston College fans got up off their feet for that one. Whether you wear a blue or. Why it don't matter, holy smokes! How much of the 150 over 90? 180 over 111. 160 over 110. I had a stroke. This is what high blood pressure looks like. You might not feel its symptoms, but the results from a stroke are far from invisible or silent. If you've come off your treatment plan, get back on it or talk with your doctor to create an exercise, diet, and medication plan that works for you. Go to loweryourhbp.org. If I would have followed a treatment plan, I would not be in this situation. One in three adults has pre-diabetes. One in three. That means it could be you, your favorite brother, your other brother, you, yes. your football buddy, your football buddy, you, the boss, the boss's boss. If one in three adults has prediabetes, that means it could be you, your barber, your barber's barber. Nice work. Thanks. Thanks. You, your plumber. Breathe right into your foot. Your plumber's masseuse. Yes. You, your dog walker. On your left. Your cat jogger. Or you, your co-pilot, your co-pilot's co-pilot. <laughs> While one in three adults has prediabetes, with early diagnosis, prediabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org to know where you stand. What to expect when you're expecting? Like here? A teenager. Today, I'm going to show you how to teen-proof your home. First step, hide the car keys. Preferably somewhere they would never look. Challenges will come up. Be ready for them. Hi, honey. Ready for the... Mom. You don't use mannequins in the mannequin challenge. You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same.
Welcome back to Buck TV News. I'm Adriana Sumlin with your entertainment news. If you're looking for some relaxing weekend entertainment, tomorrow ETSU's music department is hosting a concert. Featured artists include Dr. David Kovac and Dr. Sean Hawthorne, both of whom are a part of the music faculty for ETSU Strings. William Schaub, concert master of the Knoxville Symphony, will also be a part of the first concert of the semester. If you're interested in coming to show your fellow Bucks of support, the performance will be held in Brown Hall Auditorium at 7.30. And admission is free, but if you're feeling generous, you can donate. Calling all art lovers, the ETSU Department of Art and Design partnered with Slocum Galleries to present photographic artist Joanne Walters, Where Was It? The World. A reception will be held in Baja Auditorium on Tuesday, February 11th from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. The photographic collection is on display from now until February 14th. For more information, contact Carlotta Contreras at contreras at etsu.edu. For Black History Month, ETSU is introducing Mike Wally for a meet and greet. Wally's current positions include being a playwright, director, and actor. His productions explore the lives and legacy of historically important figures, including Emmett Till, Jackie Robinson, the Freedom Riders, and Henry Box Brown. The meet and greet will take place February 13th at 3 o'clock to 4.30. During his visit, he will be performing the play Breach of Peace, which explains the early struggle for African American equality. This will take place at the Millennium Center Ballroom on February 14th at 7 o'clock. For student and faculty members of ETSU, tickets must be picked up in the Student Activities Organization's office. Next week, Barter Theater is about to begin a new series of concerts called the Abaddon Sessions. The series starts with a concert by Jill Andrews with Darren and Brooke Adridge, also performing Andrews Gained with the Americana Group. The Everybody Fields as the front woman. The Aldridge is a husband and wife duo has received multiple nominations while topping charts on Series XM. The concert will take place at the Barters Gilliam stage. Tickets range in price from $25 to $30. Melissa Fitzgerald, former actress turned justice reform advocate, is coming to ETSU for the Festival of Ideas, and the festival gives students, faculty, and the community an opportunity to exchange ideas and learn from upcoming speakers. Fitzgerald is best known for her seven-year role as Curl on the award-winning television series, The West Wing. She is published in the New York Times and the Washington Post and received the Army's Public Service Medal in 2017. The event will be Monday, February 10th in the Millennium Center Ballroom at 7 p.m. Coming up next is your take a look at this, but first here's your Hollywood Minute with the first look at Chris Rock and his new movie, Saw. Spiral Book TV News will be right back. Whoever did this has another motive. They're targeting cops. Here's your first look at Chris Rock in the latest Saw movie, Spiral, which he also executive produced. Rock also came up with the concept for the reimagining of the horror franchise, which debuts May 15th. When the curtain comes down, we let go of the past. Tomorrow's another day. Some things weren't meant to last. Robbie Robertson's first music video in more than 20 years is Once Were Brothers, his reflection on the success and the breakup of the pioneering group, The Band. The song inspired the title of the upcoming documentary, Once Were Brothers, Robbie Robertson and the Band, opening this month. You don't want to cross me. Ah! Ah! Come back when you've done something evil to impress me. He took the stone. Yeah! There's that little thief. Go, go, go! If you ever wondered how big screen supervillain Gru got his start, Minions The Rise of Gru has the answer. Universal just released the first full trailer for the animated prequel, which bursts into theaters July 3rd. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel.
Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. Our hearts are made stronger by how we treat others. Put her there. The light you share can impact those around you, but so can the darkness. Later, twerps! Did Pete saying mean things bother you? So when you reach out to another person, <laughs> take a moment to consider how they will feel and let your heart be the key to making a difference. Because of you, someone's entire day, year, or even life can change. In every heart, there's hope. On today's Take a Look, some clever thieves steal an ATM right out of the wall. And quintuplets plus college tuition equals a whole lot of money. Reed Binion has the story. Check out this brazen ATM heist caught on camera. Yep, that's an ATM being yanked from a wall in Long Island City, New York, dragged out into the street and loaded into a van, itself believed to be stolen, all in just 60 seconds. It's unknown just how much cash the thieves got away with. Now, that money wasn't used by this New Jersey family, but it would have been a big help. All this cuteness times five is quite costly, from 50 diapers a day to contemplating how to pay for college. Driving and the college was the biggest issue. 17 years later, the Pavolo quintuplets ready for college received a great gift. We wanted to make sure that you all had the opportunity to come to Montclair State completely tuition and fee free. That's 65000 per year for the next four years, saving the Pavolos $325,000. The Quint's career plans, doctor, lawyer, teacher, dietitian, and accountant. And talk about career goals, a young hockey player was signed to a one-day contract with the NHL's Tampa Bay Lightning. 12-year-old Connor Perkins was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis in 2007 and is a die-hard Lightning fan. He got to skate with the team courtesy of the Make-A-Wish Foundation. He even scored against star goalie Andre Vasilevsky. For Take a Look at This, I'm Reed Binion. What a great shot. That's so, oh, what I a, love what that. A, what a great story. <laughs> well, the week has finally came to a close. What are your plans this weekend? Well, I actually think I might be heading home with all this snow. I don't know. I certainly won't be stealing any ATMs. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck with that. I will be cooped up in my apartment trying to stay warm. I'm sure you can make it to cookout. I don't think anything can stop you We'll from see. That. We'll see. <laughs> well, that is it for Buck News. I'm Jacob Jansen. And I'm Kayla Watson. Thank you. This has been pretty good. Yeah, this, I, this, this went pretty, very well. For our very first for one, Kate Complain. For the very first time, yep. <laughs> Looking forward to it.